welcome to the ITU studio here in Dubai in the United Arab Emirates where I'm pleased to be joined in the studio today uh, by Mr. Mario Manovic who is the director of the Radio Communication Bureau here at ITU and we're here in the Radio Communication Assembly and about to go into the World Radio Communication Conference. Mario, welcome to the studio. Thank you. My pleasure. Let's talk a little bit about so the Radio Communication Assembly, which leads into the World Radio Communication Conference. Uh, a little bit like, um, I don't know if it's like the calm before the storm, or at least the, <laughs> the calm before the rain. Perhaps you could tell us a, a little bit about, uh, um, about how this will feed into uh, uh, WRC, which is, of course, an ex extremely important event in uh, the radio communication calendar. Mm -hmm. Of course. Well, uh, the Radio Communication Assembly is uh, also held every four years just before the, the World Radio Communication Conference. And its main role is to um, agree on the work uh, plan or the work program for the radio communication sector during the following four years. So the World Radio Communication Conference uh, has to be prepared. So we have uh, many agenda items uh, that can only be discussed at the conference if a previous work has been developed in terms of studying uh, the, the proposals on sharing spectrum and use of spectrum for, for various services, how do they affect other services? So the only way to ensure that decisions made at the World Radio Communication Conference, or WRC for short, uh, are sound, is that we, they are based on studies that are made during the previous four years. So the Radio Communication Assembly will agree on the work program for the four years to prepare the following. Uh, World Radio Communication Conference. So this assembly is reviewing the work that has been done during the past four years and agreeing on the work program for the following year. This is one of the objectives. The other one is the, uh, to approve the recommendations, uh, which are the standards that uh, were developed during the past four years. If I may highlight uh, two of them. Uh, one of them is the standard on IMT 2020, which is known as 5G. So the 5G that everybody is talking about and everybody has in their mobile phones uh, or wishes to have uh, is, uh, comes out of the ITUR, uh, Study Group 5, and it is uh, part of the work that has been done and, uh, and that the Assembly is, is going to confirm and going to uh, approve the continuation of this work on what will be IMT 2030 now, which is the sixth generation of mobile communications. The other one that I cannot uh, avoid mentioning that is a source of uh, a lot of pride for us as well is the standard on um, HDR TV, which has been the object of an Emmy Award uh, this year by the Academy, the Television Academy. Uh, this is like an Oscar, but uh, for the TV. And uh, this is the third Emmy Award that we have in ITUR, and it's uh, the work of Study Group 6. So as you can see, the study groups have uh, meaningful uh, work uh, done uh, in order to, uh, let's say, achieve uh, the standards that are then used uh, in uh, radio communications around the world. And this is uh, not less than the WRC in terms of importance, uh, and it uh, leads the way for a successful WRC and the way forward. So last time we spoke, uh, we were at the ITU studio in, in Geneva. Uh, we're now here physically in Dubai and the preparations uh, have all come together. I just really wanted to find out what are your impressions now that we're here physically uh, uh, in the United Arab Emirates. Well, it's very exciting to be here again. The United Arab Emirates have hosted all uh, major ITU conference, but the WRC. And now they, they met the challenge of hosting a WRC as well. So the premises are great and all the organization is very well done. They are very well experienced in this. They know ITU requirements and how we run the conferences. So everything is, uh, is ready and they are excellent hosts. So they are waiting uh, all our participants uh, with everything ready. And I'm sure it will be the right uh, venue for this difficult conference to take place and uh, to ensure good results, we hope. You mentioned it's a difficult conference. Obviously, there are lots of issues to be discussed and, and lots of uh, uh, issues to be agreed upon. Mm -hmm. What happens on a day-to-day -day basis at a conference uh, such as this? I mean, is it really you know, dotting the I's and, and crossing the T's? Is it, uh, uh, is it arguing over one word for several hours? Because, I mean, at the beginning uh, of this week, as you say, this conference is uh, the, uh, the Radio Communication Assembly is, is in preparation for the World Radio Communication Conference. Uh, and already there were um, some concerns about working very, very late nights, etc. But I know that obviously you're a veteran of this and uh, um, I just really wanted to find out what, what your anticipations are you know, for, for, for the, the work ahead. Yes. 
Well, the assembly has a problem uh, of timing because it's very short. So it's five days and we have a very long agenda, so that's why we have late hours uh, from the beginning. Uh, but it's not mainly because of disagreement, it's more because of uh, workload and the time uh, allocated for that. In the conference it's different. In the conference we have a problem of agreement on various agenda items that are very controversial. And this is not particular to this conference. This has been the trend uh, in the last conferences. And in my view, it will continue to be the trend. Why? Because the spectrum is always the same. It's a, it's a natural resource that is rare, that is limited, and it is not growing. So uh, the, the, we have always the same resource. But what is growing is the amount of services and applications that we are uh, developing that use spectrum. So we have more and more uh, needs for spectrum while the spectrum is always the same. So that's why it becomes more and more difficult to identify and to agree on uh, bands, spectrum bands uh, for uh, new services or for new applications or for new technologies that uh, will be accepted by all because it will ha affect immediately uh, another service that is uh, working on that band. Uh, because there is no idle spectrum today, so everything is already attributed, so we have to share. And so any new uh, attribution will affect an existing one. So that's the dispute between services, between priorities, between industries, uh, between uh, government priorities, I would say, uh, and between the needs of the scientific services and the Earth observation services that are not commercial, but they are equally important. Uh, to safeguard the planet, uh, to, for the outer space activities, for scientific research, uh, and all the commercial ones that are much more, uh, let's say, if you want, lobbied for. Uh, but they are all equally important and they are all uh, trying to, let's say, defend what they have acquired so far, but at the same time trying to get new uh, spectrum for new uses and new services. So this is going to become more and more the case as we go forward because um, humanity loves mobility. Uh, the human being doesn't want to be plugged to the wall and they want everything to be uh, accessible wherever they want, wherever they are and whenever they want. So uh, it will be the trend uh, for the future as well. And, and looking, looking ahead, what do you think will be the most uh, uh, important issues perhaps uh, over the next uh, five weeks? We will have in all areas, important issues to be discussed. We will have in the mobile communications identification of new bands uh, for IMT. Uh, in WRC 19 in Egypt, we had identified for 5G. Now they will try to identify additional bands for uh, more uh, propagation in the mid bands uh, for this same technology. Uh, we will have also for satellite communications. As you know, in sat satellite communication is being experienced a revival. So now, uh, with all the non-geostationary satellites, we have uh, new constellations that are being launched with thousands of satellites and many more that are in the making. Uh, so uh, it's not only a spectrum issue, it's also a regulatory issue. Uh, the regulations that we have are not up to date with the advance, the quick advance, the fast advance of this uh, new generation of non-GSO satellite constellations. So we have to uh, try to update them. Uh, we have also maritime and aeronautical uh, communications that are becoming more and more important. Uh, we have these famous uh, earth stations in movement uh, that are those that are in the planes, in the boats, in the trains, or even uh, in anything that moves that you want to keep connected while you move and keep uh, having Wi-Fi and internet in the move. So for that you need an earth station that is connected to the satellite uh, while the vehicle in which you are can be an airplane or a bus or a train moves. And this, as you can imagine, this generates a lot of complexity because the interference, if the vehicle is moving, moves uh, along with the vehicle and then can reach uh, uh, different uh, other services depending on the trajectory. So it's a complicated issue, but it's something that everybody wants to have. So this is another one of them. And then, as I said, the scientific services, I mean, are very important. Uh, now that we have a, a climate emergency on Earth, uh, we want to save our planet or somehow take more care of our planet, we need to have 
uh, Earth observation satellites that tell us the temperature of the seas, uh, what happens with possible earthquakes and uh, hurricanes. And, and warnings as well, early warning uh, system. Early warning and recovery, and all these things. We need special services for that, and those are uh, using specific bands because of the scientific uh, or the, 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 the physical characteristics of the Earth, you have to measure these things in, in, in a specific band. So you cannot just move from one to the other. So it's, uh, we have to protect these bands for this to be possible. Uh, so this is also going to be the object of, of discussion. Uh, we, also, we always have the amateur bands that we cherish, uh, you know, as an historic service, but also one that today uh, is uh, is very useful when, uh, when there is an emergency, when there is a natural disaster or a man-made disaster. So amateur, uh, radio amateurs are, are always uh, ready to, to help. And sometimes when the infrastructure, communications infrastructure goes down, they are the only ones that, uh, that remain there to help people. Well, well, all of those show how relevant this conference is and how important it is to, to the planet. And, uh, and I think for, for all those who were uninitiated before, I think you've uh, definitely encapsulated uh, the, uh, the momentous uh, reasoning why this, uh, this is going to take a little bit of time, basically, to, uh, to discuss and to, to refine and to hopefully uh, make sure that everybody is... Uh, at least relatively happy um, by the end of, uh, of this conference. Uh, all the member states that have gathered here, as well as uh, industry and, uh, um, and NGOs, etc., that will be here. But Mr. Mario Manovich, thank you very much indeed for uh, being with us again in the studio. And uh, uh, we look forward to catching up with you again very soon. Of course, it was my pleasure. Thank, thank you. you. Excellent. And uh, if you've enjoyed this interview, uh, please tune in to our ITU YouTube channel, as well as uh, SoundCloud or wherever you get your podcasts from. And uh, for further information, please uh, check out our website at www.itu.int. Thanks for tuning in.